Hi, my name is Jennifer Chow, and I'm the CEO of Chimeric Therapeutics. We're thrilled to be presenting at this year's Biotech Showcase, and I truly appreciate the time that you've taken today to let me introduce Chimeric to you. Our disclaimers before I proceed. Chimeric Therapeutics is a clinical stage cell therapy company. We're proud to be the ASX leader in cell therapy development and an emerging global cell therapy company. Our lead asset, CHM1101, or our chlortoxin CAR-T, is advancing in a phase one clinical trial, and we were very pleased to see initial but encouraging clinical data from that trial in November last year. CHM2101, or our CDH17 CAR-T, is now making rapid progress towards the clinic with a planned phase one clinical trial in 2022. And our most recent addition to our pipeline, CHM0201, or our Core NK platform, is a really exciting, clinically validated, off-the-shelf NK cell therapy platform that allows us multiple development paths. We're doing all of this with a team of industry-leading cell therapy experts who have experience in development and commercialization of cell therapies. From a financial overview perspective, we're currently listed on the ASX under the ticker symbol CHM. Our market cap is approximately $90 million with a 52 week high of 44 cents and low of 24 cents for our shares. We have approximately 330 million shares on issue and board and management ownership makes up about 30% of that. At the end of September, 2021, we had approximately $17.4 million cash on hand. Our mission at Chimeric Therapeutics is to bring the promise of cell therapy to life for more patients. And for us, what that really means is bringing therapies with curative intent to more patients with cancer. We believe that traditional drug development is focused very much on delaying disease progression, but that cell therapies have actually shown and demonstrated that they have the promise to cure cancer. So our goal is to find more assets and develop those assets to bring that promise to more patients with cancer. The cell therapy investment landscape is actually the most active investment sector in biotech today, with over $20 billion in financing in 2020 alone. And so you can see that people really truly do believe in this promise to bring cell therapy to life for more patients. The global market is anticipated to reach eight to $9 billion by 2026. And in the past 18 to 24 months, what we've seen is nearly all of the big pharmaceutical companies enhance their pipeline and portfolio with cell therapies through acquisitions and partnerships, some of which are highlighted here below. For Chimeric, when we set about developing our pipeline and our portfolio, we did so with this strategy in mind. What we wanted to find were assets that were, had novel designs, were novel antigen targets, third generation constructs, used innovative platform enhancements. We also wanted to look at balancing our portfolio with assets that used alternative cell types, so therapies that use T cells or NK cells. And then the third piece of our development strategy was around balancing the cell sources. So looking at therapies that were individualized or autologous and use those types of cell sources, and also then looking at off the shelf or allogeneic cell sources. Today, we're very pleased that we've been able to develop a diversified pipeline with cutting edge innovation that actually has followed the balanced strategy. All of our assets are novel designs. We now have both T cells and NK cells and autologous and allogeneic therapies represented in our pipeline. I'm gonna start by introducing you to our lead asset, CHM1101, which is a novel design CAR T cell therapy that uses autologous cells. CHM1101 or our chlortoxin CAR T was designed and studied preclinically for patients with recurrent or progressive glioblastoma. And that is certainly one of the most lethal disease out there, diseases out there. And so truly has a high unmet medical need. CHM1101 uniquely utilizes chlortoxin, a peptide derived from death stock or scorpion venom as its tumor targeting domain. And in preclinical models, we were able to see that CHM1101 was better able to find, bind and kill glioblastoma cells 
than therapy, other immunotherapy targets that are currently being developed. Chimeric holds an exclusive license to the chlorotoxin CAR-T, and it has broad and robust IP protecting it through to 2036. CHM1101 is currently being studied in an ongoing phase one clinical trial. The objective of that trial is primarily to assess safety, determine the maximum tolerated dose, and the recommended dose for a phase two clinical trial plan. The trial is designed with four different dose levels, starting at the lowest dose of 44 million cells and escalating to the highest dose of 440 million cells. It's also designed to look at two different routes of administration. In dose level one, patients were given the, the chlorotoxin or CHM1101 cells through a single route of intratumoral administration. In dose level two, three, and four, we added a second route of administration, interventricular administration, and patients will receive cells through both the intertumoral and the interventricular administration in those dose levels. We're very pleased at the end of December 2021 to announce that dose level two was completed with no DLTs, and this trial is now progressed to dose level three. In late November, we were also able to see the first very early clinical data from this trial. And that clinical data was, was on the four patients that were dosed in dose level one that received 44 million cells through that one intratumoral route of administration. Although early, it was very encouraging phase one clinical data for us, as we saw that with those four patients, three out of the four patients achieved a best overall response of stable disease, giving us a 75% disease control rate. We also were able to note that that stable disease lasted anywhere between five and eight weeks for these patients. When we take that into context with other assets currently being developed for glioblastoma, we actually see that that 75% disease control rate, again, although very early, is certainly encouraging. The other thing that we were able to see from an efficacy perspective with this very early data was regional tumor control. So one patient exhibited regional tumor control, and you can see that highlighted here on the scans that are shown. Where the patient actually had the cells administered directly through that intertumoral catheter, there was no recurrence of tumor. The patient actually had progression and was deemed to have progressed from a, an overall uh, Reno criteria perspective because they had progression at a site that was away from where the tumor or where the chlorotoxin CAR T cells were actually administered. This gives us optimism as we move into those dual routes of administration and patients are receiving their cells through more than one into more than one area in the brain. We were also in that early in this early clinical data able to see what we believe is a promising safety profile. There was no dose limiting toxicities. The therapy was generally well tolerated by all patients. There was one grade three cerebral edema that was attributed only at the possible level to the chlorotoxin CAR T cells with recognition that cerebral edema is a common adverse event in patients with recurrent or progressive glioblastoma. And then finally, a couple other key insights were highlighted through this data set that was presented. We did see no immunogenicity was detected. So there was per persistence of the chlorotoxin CAR T cells throughout the treatment period. We also saw that there was a suggested benefit in treatment of aggressive disease. And so some of the basic research that was presented suggested that higher MMP2 expression levels actually are, exist in advanced levels of disease. And when you pair that with chlorotoxins killing preferentially for higher MMP2, certainly there's a suggestion that there will be benefit to chlorotoxin in treatment of aggressive disease. And then the third key insight that we were actually able to pull out of the data that was presented in late 2021 was early evidence for expansion into melanoma. What we were able to see is the early staining of a melanoma cell line confirms strong MMP2 expression in melanoma and a consistently strong correlation between that MMP2 expression and chlorotoxin binding, suggesting early support for us moving chlorotoxin CAR-T into metastatic melanoma.
So with that data in hand, we're now expanding the clinical development for CHM1101. We're moving the trial in glioblastoma from being a single site trial to a multiple site trial in 2022. And we do hope to achieve this in the first half of 2022. We're also moving forward right away to advance melanoma to the clinic. And then we anticipate that we'll be advancing colorectal and prostate cancer to the clinic as well later in 2022. Let me now introduce you to CHM2101, our CDH17 CAR-T. And this particular CAR-T has shown incredible promise for patients with gastrointestinal cancers. Chimeric holds the exclusive license to this novel third generation CAR-T we were able to bring in from the world-renowned cell therapy center, the University of Pennsylvania. This particular third generation CAR-T showed dramatic preclinical evidence with both complete eradication of tumor cells with no relapse and no toxicity to normal tissues. We have a phase one clinical trial planned in 2022, which is being supported through a sponsored research agreement with the University of Pennsylvania. And we believe that CHM2101 has broad applicability across multiple different types of gastrointestinal tumors. Highlighted here is that dramatic preclinical efficacy that we saw with CHM2101. What you see in the chart on the right, the yellow and the black line essentially are our controls, tumor volume growing over time if left untreated. What you see highlighted with the red bar, or the red line, is a CDH17, but a second generation CAR-T. So you see that the tumor growth has been slowed down, but certainly still exists. The reason we're so excited about CHM2101 is that we, it is reflected here in the green lines. And so what you see is complete eradication of tumor cells and no relapse whatsoever in the preclinical models. And this was paired with demonstrated preclinical safety. What we were able to see is the CDH17 CAR T cells, although they potently infiltrated tumor cells, they spared the normal cells, even when they expressed CDH17, because tight junctions protected the CAR T cells, the normal cells, from being able to be killed by the CAR T cells. So we're incredibly excited to be able to move this asset forward into phase one clinical trial. And because of what we've seen in the preclinical setting, we're planning to do so in a basket trial setting where we're going to actually explore patients with all four types of tumors highlighted here. Neuroendocrine tumors, colorectal cancer, gastric cancer, and pancreatic cancer. We've made great strides since we licensed this in July of 2021 in moving this, this uh, CDH17 CAR T through towards the clinic. We completed our research plasmids, which was a critical first step towards our technical operations. And Dr. Waugh, the inventor of the CDH17 CAR-T and his team have been advancing all of the preclinical work that we need to move into clinic in 2022. In the first half of this year, we're gonna be focusing on our viral vector manufacturing and completing our preclinical data, looking to be able to move into an IND filing in the second half of this year and open the trial at the University of Pennsylvania. Now that I've talked about our T cell therapies that are autologous, both CHM1101 and 2101, let me highlight for you our most recent asset, our core NK platform, which utilizes NK cells in an allogeneic or off the shelf therapy. So our core NK platform is clinically validated. It's off the shelf, robust, and enhanced natural killer cell therapy platform. It has clinically been validated in a phase one clinical trial in both blood cancers and solid tumors. And it enables us near-term development of four additional chimeric therapies for solid tumors and blood cancers, synergistic with our chlortoxin and our CDH17 CAR-Ts that I just talked about. We also believe that there's further opportunity to leverage this platform to build additional new therapies through partnerships or licensing. And we're planning new clinical trials based on the Corrin K platform in 2023. So essentially the development of the Corrin K platform came about at the Case Western Reserve University with Dr. David Wald. He took 
natural killer cells, which have a natural ability to fight cancer, both through indirect and direct mechanisms. And he activated and expanded them to develop the Corian K platform cells. He then took those cells into a phase one clinical trial. And you can see her highlighted the patient eligibility. So both patients with blood cancers and solid tumors were enrolled in the trial. The trial initiation was in May, 2018, and the trial was completed in June, 2021. We anticipate that there will see the data in 2022. The trial had dose escalation, three different dose levels, starting off at 10 million cells, up to 50 million NK cells per key. Now with our core NK platform, we actually see three different development paths. And so as a platform technology, we're really excited about what this particular, what we're going to be able to do with this particular asset. First and foremost, we're going to take the Corian K platform and we're going to de develop a next generation Corian K platform. We're also, secondly, going to develop Corian K products. And then third, we're going to look for additional opportunities to leverage that Corian K platform. So our next generation enhancements are going to take us from CHMO201 as the Corian K platform to 0301 as we add in next generation enhancements. And then we're going to use that next generation Corian K platform, develop it in blood cancers as a combination therapy in diseases such as AML, B cell malignancies like DLBCL, and multiple myeloma. We're second going to build Corian K products. So essentially, we're going to turn that Corian K platform into Corian K cells by inserting chimeric antigen receptors. And we're going to start by leveraging our own pipeline and portfolio by using our chlortoxin car and our CDH17 car to develop CHM1301, a chlortoxin car in K, and CHM2301, a CDH17 car in K therapy. And then finally, we're going to look to leverage the Corian K platform to identify further opportunities through collaboration and licensing. Some of the deals that have recently been done with NK cell platforms are highlighted here. So we'll really be looking to expand out how we leverage this particular platform. With all of that, we now have an incredibly robust and advanced cell therapy portfolio and pipeline. We have seven unique assets, eight clinical programs planned by 2023, and that will cover us across 10 different disease areas in oncology. So very exciting times and a lot of activity going on here to move all of these programs forward. This wouldn't be possible without an incredible team of cell therapy experts that have experience in both the development and ultimately the commercialization of cell therapies. What you see highlighted here are just some of our management team expertise. We've developed over 25 cell therapies across the four of us, including four out of five of the FDA approved CAR T cell therapies highlighted there. So for Chimeric, we're really focused on three particular areas. Our pipeline, where we have seven innovative assets today using both alternative cell types and cell sources. On advancing our programs, we're gonna have four clinical trials in 2022 and moving into eight clinical programs by 2023. And doing that through the right people deep experience and expertise, accelerating cell therapies to commercialization. With that, I thank you so much for your time and invite you to contact me if you have any questions that you'd like to discuss.